I'd like to introduce our executive director, uh, Dan Gary. Uh, Dan's been with us for about six years, a full-time volunteer. Uh, this is a commitment that I, I will never be able to thank him enough. <clears throat> and we're really proud. Uh, we just uh, hired our first ever president uh, for the company. Uh, she's leading the group. In fact, the story that we're talking about doing with WAVE is one of coming alongside those who are suffering the people who are in need in this country. When you finally get to meet Kristen, you're gonna find someone who was facing most amazing suffering, and I'll let her tell her story, but somehow she came out of it on the other side in this most amazing, beautiful way. Uh, that's the love story we wanna talk with America about, how we can come alongside and begin to change the suffering that each one goes through, because there's someone you can talk to in the present, in the present moment. Uh, the World Alliance for the Volunteer Economy, we, we wanted to do a pilot project. So what you're hearing today is the pilot, the pilot project that we're doing. The uh, Volunteer Economy launched last 4th of July. Uh, Ohio Christian University back in Ohio sent out 400 volunteers uh, as well as 40 of their staff to be able to go out into the community. And what we did most unique, we gave them an app, thanks to Chad Clark who led the development. We have them an app that they can take out and log their volunteer time right now. Uh, and log their volunteer time and bank it. So we do that so that they can get rewards. They can get gifts from others in the future. So the, the Volunteer Economy Pilot Project is focused on rewarding in a very specific area, academics. We believe if we can start with the youth for getting them unlimited lifelong education. Uh, that we can have a dramatic impact. So the notion of WAVE is to connect, uh, enable people to volunteer, and reward the behavior. We're trying to change the nature of behavior in this local community and around the world. Uh, the uh, collaborative itself is part of the 501c3 World Alliance for the Volunteer Economy. We take advantage of that. Next chart, Dan. This I'm going to ask you to close your eyes just for a moment, please. Close your eyes, close your eyes. Now, you should that you have charts, you have people close your eyes. But it's our imagine statement, and this is what we want the country to do. We, this is what we want Albuquerque to do. This is what the world, we want you to engage. So imagine a world where timely and affordable access to lifelong education, economic opportunity, and health and well-being are provided for volunteers, enabling social justice and a healthy environment. Imagine, imagine, imagine one relationship at a time. I, I have no doubt that we can do it. Next chart, Dan. I'm going to ask Dan to go around the room and, and give you a gift. Because here's the notion of what we're doing in the simplest of forms. We're asking every individual and every one organization that has something to share that they agree to share it, plus 10%. Now, as a Christian, I think about 10% being that tithing piece. But we're asking the whole world to gift 10%. What would that look like? And keep in mind as I'm talking about this, what we're building on is the notion of a frequent flyer program. This is a frequent volunteer program. The more you volunteer, the more you earn, the more you're rewarded in the system. That notion makes sense? Because what, what American Airlines did for the first one ever was said, we have an empty seat, and with an empty seat, we can put somebody in it. It didn't really cost us any money. And they created a reward, reward program now has been replicated around the world. And my biggest aha moment and getting things started was when I found out that, lo and behold, frequent flyer points is the world's largest currency. Points is the largest currency in the world. So we're tapping into that system by creating a system where we use volunteer time as points, as currency. And we ask people to share their underutilized gifts in, into the community. So, pardon me here, I'm going to step over. Oh, you drive here. So in, in looking at going forward, this set the stage for the world, set the stage for America, set the stage for New Mexico, the Rio Grande Valley. The big challenge that we believe that we face at the present time is that the country lacks wisdom figures. I'd like for you to, on one hand, count how many wisdom figures you, you can point to in America. It breaks my heart. Uh, I remember wisdom figures. They changed my life. They created aha moments for me that were most phenomenal along the way. The other thing we don't have is a rite of passage. What have we done to our youth? 
We put them in a position where they don't get to touch and feel, and here's the big one, they don't get to fail. They don't get to fail. We send them out into the world, go get your college education at 40000 a year, kind of on average. $160,000 spent on something, and the number of people that finish doing what they started with is a small number. So our interest is creating rites of passage, starting with birth. How do we get into the early childhood and move that all the way through life in all the areas for learning and doing, for economic opportunity, for health, for social services, and the environment? We can mobilize people in a very easy way using technology to make it happen. Next, Dan. So think about this. We are living in a world where it's all about me. It's so much about me. In fact, if you guys haven't heard it, it's about me. <laughs> At least for the next half hour. <laughs> but the intent is, how do we move from I volunteer, which, is, which begins to be, it's more transactional. I'm doing it for whatever that reason is, up the scale to where we volunteer. And things start to happen in a different way when we volunteer. And finally, what becomes especially enabling is if everybody's volunteering. This is transformational, and what I'm seeking in America is radical transformation. Not nibbling at the edges, but radical transformation. Next chart. So I put this up here just to say that for the, my brother was murdered <clears throat> in 2005. Uh, up to that time, my main job in life was as high-tech entrepreneur starting many businesses here in New Mexico. Uh, successful enough that I could actually retire after we sold our company to Boeing, but only to find myself involved in community affairs and issues that after my brother was, was killed. It was an issue of being able to figure out why in the world is this thing so broken? Why is the society so messed up? And second, how do I learn to forget? Our country struggles to forget. We drag all that stuff into the present moment. So this begins to open up that these people, they used to say friends of Paul, but now move from the friends of Paul to the friends of friends of Paul, and we're having the friends of friends of friends of Paul, and welcome to being a friend of Wayne. Thank you. Next chart. So there's also something else happening in America that's especially important. This is the relationship age we're in, but we don't know how to do relationships. We're doing this. You know, as long as I'm doing this, I'm, I'm, I'm okay in the, in the mix. But we've got our kids now talk about no relationships. So we're going to use technology to get them into face-to-face -face relationships, into society, into failing, into learning, into doing along the way. But what's happening is the hierarchy, the bureaucracy that we have, where it flows down, which New Mexico is, we have, we have the federal government that's basically here as the one that's flowing down to us through so many different vehicles, but that's really what's happening. And it's not surprising at some level that New Mexico has the highest capita of PhDs, but we also have the highest level of family poverty. How, how is that bifurcation happening in this country, in this state? So what we're doing is we're taking the underutilized assets and we're moving to a place that, because it's relationships, we're going to empower you and you and you so you can self-organize. Who do you want to be with? How do you want to collaborate? So make it right now you can find someone that you want to collaborate with to change things. And we want to reward that behavior. Part of the work we're doing, we're partnering with Purdue University. Uh, Purdue created this process called strategic doing. And I don't know how many of you have been involved in strategic planning, but in strategic planning, over 70% of those documents that are produced get put on the shelf. And they're one of the most frustrating exercises you'll ever run into in life. Or we're going to have one more meeting. Uh, we'll have another meeting, and after that meeting, then we're going to go raise some money. Then, then, then. Strategic doing says that within 90 days, you're doing. You're doing. And you're going to hear a lot more about this as we, as we carry it forward. Next chart. If you think about society, my job as an engineer, as an entrepreneur, and now I have a doctorate in theology where I'm trying to apply all this in the marketplace, is let's start with the players. We have individuals who have needs, but they can also volunteer. We have organizations that have needs, but you know what? They can provide services through volunteerism. So how do we begin to get people to collaborate, to lower the barriers and move people through? Well, that's what we do. We work to establish the vision, the mission, the structure, 
provide the tools and the approach that brings everybody into the game. Next chart. So we have individuals in need who we need to help them connect with volunteers. We have organizations in need who also need volunteers. What we're working to do is make every organization more successful. We are here to help every, every organization have their needs met so that they can go forward. Next chart. So to organize it, the way collaborative set up, we're taking individuals and we're basically having them volunteer through organizations. So the organization is the home for the volunteers to be able to, to be able to engage. And the costs, volunteer time. There's no charge. This is all free in the sense that if you're willing to serve humanity, we're going to give you a shot at doing something really different. And think about this. We have about 7.6 billion people rolling around the world. And what I like to share is they're all members right now. We just haven't been able to get the word out to them yet. And that's why we need the help of you. We need to get the word out. Because when time becomes the currency, everyone has a chance to come into the economy. Everyone can have a chance to get education and health care. A parent can volunteer for their child so their child can get free education and free health care and free economic opportunity. So by being able to use the organizations, we're going to help them succeed. We're going to help them succeed. And oh, by the way, what we're asking of the organizations, are they willing to share plus 10%? American Airlines, are you willing to give us an empty seat? The movie theater, 500 people or 500 seats, one person sitting there watching the movie, what does it cost the movie theater to add 499 volunteers for free? It's like nothing. But guess what just happened to popcorn sales? It changes everything when you change your mindset and move away from fear and scarcity, which dominates too much of our culture. Where do we move to find love and the notion that there is abundance? Next chart. So here's the way we're looking at it, to organize it. Here's an organization that is both serving and sharing, has needs, is willing to go out and do good things. But what we do is we organize the volunteers up in the cloud. They're, they're on volunteer standby when they want to be on standby. So it's like Uber. But you're on volunteer standby, and they're basically clustered by areas, social services, health and well-being, learning and doing, economic opportunity, the environment. All these come together with the Volunteer Economy web app. I need help. Help. What kind of help do you need? Educational learning. And it gets you to the person in the cloud. Think of it as, I call it wave harmony, but think of it as e-harmony for dating. But this is now wave harmony for volunteers. You can find the right person, the right place, the right thing. And we're starting this pilot with people. Our goal is to get to the place that not only can you find people on standby, but there's an empty conference room that's available to use. If you're starting a new business, there's a piece of equipment that we know about that's sitting over at Sandia that they haven't used in 25 years. They can share those things. It's, it, we just need to let everybody know where they are. Next. <clears throat> so here's the four key components so you can kind of get a, a, a sense of how this flows. First off, the app is about matching, connecting, and communicating. Wave ripples. That's our volunteer currency. You make ripples in other people's lives when you volunteer. A bank of trust. You'll see the word trust coming up over and over and over and over again because that's the number one reason that our economy is not working. We don't trust God. We don't trust our government. We don't trust our neighbor. How in the world do we lift the veil of separation so that trust is what we're all flowing through all the time? So the bank of trust basically we bank the ripples, and the ripples can be used later to get rewards. The more you volunteer, the more that you get to have in the mix. Next, Dan. So here's the way it works. Someone has a request, and they get matched with an individual that's a member of an organization. There's some organization out there doing learning and doing. They have their own volunteers that are operating from their organization. So an individual gets matched with that person. They communicate. They figure out what the issue is, not go talk to the bureaucrat and start working your way down the system. We're trying to go to the person that can get it done right now and bring up from the bottom. 
So they decide when to get together to solve a problem. They get the assistance. Then there's feedback. Again, we're trying to build trust. It's like a five-star rating for every volunteer. Feedback one way or the other. And then we bank it. And we bank it for the future so we can give you, remember that plus 10% gifts I'm asking? We can give you one of those gifts. Who knows what it looks like? Next, please. So here's the simple notion, because people go, well, how is this financially sustainable? I claim this is financially sustainable. So Birga is hosting this meeting. And I said, Birga, as a member, she's a member, uh, here you go. We're going to give you ripples that you can deploy into this meeting. So however many meeting people we have, uh, for every one of you here, that what we've asked her organization to do is gift a dollar to sponsor each hour that you're here. So you're an hour and a half. That's a buck fifty is what you're going to end up with uh, in terms of this, this notion of what she's given. But what you're really doing is you're banking an hour of volunteer time, if you're a member. You're banking an hour or an hour and a half of volunteer time. So last year in America, there were over 8 billion, I just heard of a figure, 13 billion hours delivered by volunteers. Those are blue collar volunteers. Given that that's the case, what would it look like if all of a sudden I had 8 billion or $10 billion that I could pool and I could go out and buy? I could go out and buy like a co-op. We, we, we negotiate and we get group benefits, education and economic opportunity and health care underneath our collaborative. Uh, that's the approach. There's a dollar that comes in to sponsor everything that's happening. And I, I would guess that almost everybody in this room can quote what an hour of volunteer time is worth. Was it worth? $24. Yeah, last hour, $24 and 69 cents. So if, you, if you'll permit me, 25 bucks of value uh, along the way. Next chart, please. So within the bank of trust, what we do is the ripples, once they're earned, basically get banked in the individual account for each individual. But here's the cool deal. You can gift it to someone else who's in need. So there's a double whammy kind of play here. You get the volunteer hour, then if you see somebody else in need, you can gift it to them. Because there are people that just can't volunteer for whatever reason but we can be there for them by going out and doing our thing. I can be a grandfather and go out and volunteer my time and gift it to my grandson so when he starts college, he's going to be able to have lifelong learning for free. Imagine what that looks like. I, I, next, please. Yeah, I'm What's sorry. the bullet point? Oh, sorry. I forgot about the bullets. Go ahead. Next, Sam. One more. There we go. There's a, there's a part on that chart which becomes real important. Foundations have money. It's really cool. Have you guys ever asked anybody for money? Well, what a distraction. Wouldn't it be nice just to be the leader of an organization? What you really have to worry about is meeting your mission needs. It, you know, as a board member of so many different organizations in the past, the last thing I, I, I hate being asked to go raise money. And the groups where they say, oh, it's a $10,000, just be being on the board. Thank you very much. You know, <laughs> we don't need any more barriers to get people moving through. We, we, one of the problems I found is fascinating me. Organizations often don't want to share their volunteers, and they certainly are not going to share their donor list. I, I, we, we've got to find a way to collaborate because when we pool, again, 8, 10, 12, 13 billion hours where I get a dollar for each one and I put it together and provide benefits for all the volunteers, then they're, one, they're going to want to go to organizations that are in the, in, a member of the collaborative so that they can get rewards as well for the volunteer time uh, that they get. But the other thing it plays is with the foundation corpus, what we do is we go out and invest it. And that's what all foundations do. They have somebody, a committee overseeing it, then they outsource it. And so what, what ends up happening is we go ahead and when we have the bank of trust manage it so you can get cash. You get cash. Uh, so that here, we use volunteer time, talent, and treasure to get you in the game. Now let's say you want to start a business or you're in need for some reason. We're, we're going to be willing, not today, <laughs> not today, but we will by the time the five-year project is done. We are going to be willing to loan money to individuals based upon the collateral of volunteer time. The more volunteer time you have in your account, 
the more you can borrow. That's it. One of the biggest issues around poverty in the world is what happens due to the whole flow of debt, how it cripples humanity as we, get, we find ourselves in a position and we lose our focus on what needs to be done. The other piece is, I, I mentioned I'm a high-tech uh, entrepreneur, that what we're doing is we're creating a venture fund, and what the venture fund will be doing is investing in volunteer economy activities. So if you agree to join and you want to start a business, we'll help you. We'll give you free unlimited access to time, talent, and treasure to help pursue your dream and then carry it forward. Next example. So think of the pool, the rewards pool. Th th this is it. The first biggest gift of all is our time. And we're asking people to gift plus 10%. But everybody will pretty well make it clear. I don't have, come on, I don't have any, I don't have any time. I'm, I'm too busy. But if you look, we can begin to, by organizing, training, and equipping, and rewarding people, provide learning and doing, economic opportunity, health and well-being, entertainment, and meet the basic needs of humanity, of humanity. Next, please. So I want to first address the issue of my time. It's all about me. Because one of the biggest nuts we have that to crack is, is what's in it for me? What's, what's in it for me? Well, let's look at a typical week. If, if you work, that's 40 hours a week. Sleep, that's 56 hours a week. Eat, that's 14 hours a week. It takes about two hours to either buy, prepare, or eat your food in a typical day, if you add it up. Your hygiene takes about an hour. I found that it's different depending on sex. That I, that's what I found along the way. And a commute, uh, I put it in there for seven, but we're going to even give you credit for commuting on Sunday to church. I mean, I think that's a, a or synagogue, or where do you want to go? So that's 124 hours versus 168. That's 44 hours of discretionary time? Really? I had no idea. So what I want you to do, would you, would you gift just 10% of your discretionary time? That's what we call a full-time volunteer. Someone who's willing to gift 4%, or excuse me, 10%, essentially four hours a week, 208 hours a year. Next chart. And depending on how much you volunteer, up the scale you go. Look at this. We're trying to make sure that we, we meet the basic needs of all people. So what we do is to say to stay in the, the collaborative, you need to at least volunteer an hour a week. So it kind of gets people in, and if they can't volunteer, it falls back. But if they go to zero over the, the last year, looking back, then at that point, all they have in their account goes away. It goes back into the community chest to be used by others. Second, silver, 208. This is where we think the learning and doing really happens. Imagine the rite of passage for kids where they volunteer for seven years from sixth grade through their senior year in high school. And what's happening is they're putting away 208 hours a year. So that's over 1,400 hours. Look at the top of the list. If you have over 1,000 hours in your account at any given time, you don't even have to cash it in. This is where transformation happens. See, we, we live in a transactional world. And essentially, we're negotiating all the time from a place of scarcity. I'm trying to get the best deal on that car. That guy's trying to make sure he gets enough commission. You know, it's just back and forth. But what we're saying is if you maintain that kind of service to society, we're going to give it to you for free. Health care, education, economic opportunity. And as an entrepreneur, trust me, my budget guys are saying it's possible. It's possible. All we have to do is realign the flow where there's so much inefficiency in the system. Next chart. Oh, actually, go back to that for a moment. Yeah, thank you. I'll come back to it. Go ahead. Sorry. Just check to see if you can drive. So to get this going, what we've done is we've gone uh, to higher edge programs. Ohio Christian University back in Ohio has gifted plus 10%. They are deploying... Uh, Let's see, they're, they're deploying 190, let's see, they're 190 volunteer scholarships. They're gifting 10% of that, which comes to us. All of a sudden, Wade has 1,900 three-hour college credit classes for free, no tuition. And so by gifting it, here they are sitting in the middle of Ohio, but the best thing is they do distance learning. 3,000 of their 3,500 students are distance learning. And the whole notion of lifelong learning, I'm supposed to see inside here. 
Uh, the whole this notion of lifelong learning uh, for us is we're taking advantage of the distance learning for rural America especially and be able to go ahead from there and make sure everybody can volunteer and get connected into the system. And we provide a mentor for each one of those students up in the cloud. Whether you're struggling with the notion of solving your algebra homework or you're thinking about committing suicide, there's a need for a wisdom figure. And we can change the landscape of America by making them available when they need to be. Next chart. Oh, I'm sorry, go back one more time. Sorry, I do want to mention this. Here's a new shift in the process. You see this thing called new collar workforce? We're moving into that place where what the new collar workforce looks like is a blend between access to technology. So think of 3D, 3D printing. That you sit down, you learn a little bit of technology, and you're able to develop your prototype right now. That's the kind of learning. It's a blend of hands-on along with being able to do the work. So they've gifted 10% of all theirs. 10%. 10%, we pulled it together. The value of this is $2.6 million of what they give to this. Isn't that cool? Now I get to go give it away. I get to spend my life giving it away. Or, more importantly, I want to ask you to help us give it away. Next chart. This is Ohio Christian University. Again, 1,900 online V scholarships have been donated. Uh, go ahead, Dan. Uh, what we're doing is within the collaborative, the people who are needy, families, whatever, who need basic needs, who need care, whether it's health or education, and value creation. When I say value creation, the world is moving to the point that time is the number one currency in the next 15 years, easily. It already is, but we just don't even realize it is. And what we're doing is moving through the, oh, I'm sorry, this is the, this is, go to the venture now, I'm sorry, next one. I'm sorry, in the collaborative, we're trying to make sure that the basic needs, care, and value are done through member organizations, so we send them to somebody that can certify them as doing some skills and they're trustworthy in the organization. We give the organization and the volunteers access to the app. And then we have a volunteer resume that you carry with you for life. It's a digital resume that shows what you did. And you can use it for whatever, your certificates. But we help you get health education and basic needs met. And also, whether it's a paid opportunity or a volunteer opportunity, you're serving and sharing where you can at the present moment. Next. This one is our approach to creating businesses. The first business I ever created, three of us kicked in 500 bucks. And we volunteered over a half million dollars worth of high-tech time. And we won a little $50,000 $50, contract that we got paid for. But it ended up turning into 15 to $20 million worth of revenue for our company, as well as a $10 million investment. So if we take time and talent, organize it, and put in a little money, you can get a lot done. I sold that company, I should say we sold that company to Boeing. And they, get, they gave us more than $500 each. It was kind of a nice thing. Next. So to launch this, to help people get out of the mindset that it's here, you know, we're not willing to share. We're saying, no, 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 let's start from the start. Let's start. We have five valleys that we're launching in because we can do it virtually. We, we, can, we can organize, train, and equip across each valley, and then each valley shares. So our first projects are going to be in rural America that's struggling to get resources. Next thing. My hometown, Fulton County, Indiana, I'm one of eight kids, and six of us left Indiana to come live in New Mexico. And even better yet, my mom came out and lived in New Mexico. The coolest things ever. And I get to go back to my hometown, and they have 20,000 people that live there. Our intent within five years that anyone who's volunteering can have free health care, free education, and free economic opportunity. I, and we're doing this, the plan is, right now we haven't settled it, but we hope Grant, New Mexico, where Western New Mexico University is, that we're doing a small village down there. And we want Albuquerque to be the big sister, to be able to be in a position to help sharing resources within the state, but also sharing with Dayton, Ohio, and Fulton County, Indiana, around the country. 